Hey all, your OS reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at the Mealy Overclock 4C. This is a mini PC that runs on Windows 11 and still is pretty compact, but it is a little bit larger in terms of the chassis compared to some of the quieter line as well as the PC stick design that we saw from them previously. This is their PC G02 Pro. However, their PC stick and also the quieter series, as the name implies, are completely silent fanless machines. They are going to be as small as possible compared to the overclock 4C here, as the name also hints at, still uses similar components but now introduces a fan, allowing it to run for longer periods of time without noticing as much thermal throttling, so you can push it a little bit heavier, sustain performance for a little bit longer, seeing roughly a 10-15% to 15 performance bump under some of those heavier loads. So if you're trying to squeeze out more performance and you're okay with a slightly larger chassis, that's where the overclock 4C might be beneficial. Now it still is pretty energy efficient at the end of the day, as a mini PC of course, running on the Intel N100 processor. It comes in multiple configurations, but ours has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you can also expect 512 gigabytes of built-in storage. So 256 gigabytes on an SSD, a little bit faster read and write speed, 256 gigabytes from the eMMC, perhaps for some regular documents and smaller files, supporting Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth 5.1, pretty up to date, as well as a Type-C port that can also be used for a video display output, 4K at 60 Hz, along with two full-size HDMI ports. So you can extend three monitors in total. Also, the larger chassis of the Overclock 4C now supports a standard M2 SATA slot, so you can pop in your own SSD if you want to further augment the built-in storage. So it's good for repairability and also expansion purposes compared to the PC sticks and the quieter line basically were non-upgradable. Everything was soldered in because everything is so compact and small. So there are some of those pros and cons, but ultimately this is still a relatively entry-level mini PC going for just a little north of $200 give and take. Build quality still seems to be solid enough, crafted mostly out of a polycarbonate plastic, and we do have an interesting grid-like texture if we look closely onto the top surface, although it is a little bit more of a lint and fingerprint magnet this time around. Very slim, all things considered. We have just a power key here, and then located on the right-hand spine, we've got three full-size Type-A USB ports. Two of these are going to be 3.0 speed, so quite fast for read and write, one USB 2.0, and then on the back we have even more I.O. It's crammed and filling pretty much every single space nook and cranny available on this unit. We have that USB Type-C that can be used for data as well as 4K display output. In addition to a micro SD card reader is on here, plus a 3.5mm headphone jack connecting to headphones or speaker, two HDMI ports, we've got another Type-C here which is designed for power input, 12 volts, a full-size Ethernet port as well, so if you want to use wired internet instead of Wi-Fi, and again some ventilation for the fans that will kick in, plus a Kingsington lock here on the side. Finally, on the very back it looks like this. We have some soft touch rubber feet plus some VESA mounting brackets if you want to still attach it behind a TV. It is relatively lightweight and seems to be doable or you can remove these to get access to the M2 SATA slot. The sticker here by the way is also removable if you want an even cleaner look although it touts some of the features including seems like it won a design award for the outer shell as well as having a quote-unquote intelligent fan so it will dial up and down accordingly based on how much load the CPU is under. It seems like they've also picked up a red dot design award here recently as well. Here it is next to kind of an average 5.6 inch phone, so it's not much larger than your smartphone or kind of a pro sized phone, as you can tell there, but it is running on a full version of Windows, even if it's technically a little bit larger versus the fanless variant, but you have more repairability and again slightly more performance as well. That being said, if we had to be really nitpicky, it seems like their catalog is still quite reliant on some of these Celeron ships. Again, this one is the Elder Lake 12th gen architecture, which to be fair has a already improved significantly compared to past generations. The top speed here is 3.4 gigahertz, and otherwise navigating around for simple office computing tasks really shouldn't be an issue, particularly on this overclock unit. Again, I just bring that up though because it would be nice if they introduce some other processor variants down the line, perhaps if you are hungry for even more performance, if they considered having an i3 or a newer i5 variant, or even AMD, I think that could shake things up a little bit for the Mealy fans out there. But nonetheless, we have a couple of specs here. It is DDR4 for the RAM, and of course you can install other OSs as well, including Linux, Ubuntu if you prefer. Their slogan here is Exceptional Design, Aesthetic Renewal. Again, that portability is still emphasized despite this one having a slightly larger shell 
style. Packaging here is also similar to their other products, including a flap that can serve double duty as a postcard, kind of fun. There's also a quick start guide, again documenting some of their other products in the lineup. And down below here, we'll find access to the typical VESA mounting brackets, in addition to the power adapter, which again is using USB Type-C, which is nice to find, as well as removable adapter tips, depending on if you're in the US or Europe, although only one, it looks like, is included by default. And a cold boot into Windows 11 takes less than 30 seconds, relatively quick. So if you're just doing light computing, navigating around the UI actually feels really not bad from a responsiveness point of view, despite plenty of these animations within Windows 11. So despite using the same processor as the quieter as well as the PC stick line, it just feels a little bit more responsive, probably helped by the active cooling inside, keeping performance just a little bit more stable as well. Now if we take a closer look here at the file manager, we can tell that the Windows operating system takes 25 to 30 gigs of space, leaving you with around 190 gigabytes left for installing programs and media files on the C disk, that's the SSD, whereas the D drive contains an additional 240 gigabytes for you to install other programs and media files. But again, keep in mind that by default, this half of the storage is a little bit slower in terms of read and write compared to the faster SSD located on the C drive. So perhaps if we had to nitpick, it would have been nice if they also used a faster SSD for both C and D. That's one area where some corners were cut from a cost and production point of view. But at least on this model, you can change the M2 SATA into a faster SSD if you need faster performance. If you're just storing documents as well as media files, D drive is probably still fine unless it's a really large 4K local file or if you're trying to install more intensive applications, that's where a faster read and write speed will be more beneficial. We can also confirm that indeed it's using that N100 processor, quad-core chip with four threads, and 64-bit version of the OS Windows 11 Pro has been installed and fully licensed looking pretty good on what is otherwise a very clean version of the Windows installation. You don't really get any bloatware here, aside from a couple of essential utility tools from Microsoft, the store, as well as the Edge browser, and that's basically it. There's no additional extras that Melee have installed themselves. And again, all the UI elements actually feels responsive enough, as you can tell here just clicking along. There's not as much lag or delay as expected from a really budget or entry-level computer. Just two or three years back, I can still recall how clicking on some of the menus within Windows would take a second or two longer for it to load up. So this is definitely one area where we see a slight improvement in the compute performance. Wi-Fi reception quality has also been very strong, again, thanks to the dual band Wi-Fi 6 support, I was getting almost full bars along with Bluetooth 5 as well. So connecting to devices, loading back pages, you're not gonna find too many issues here. And speaking of web browsing, to Microsoft's credit, Edge has also improved compared to really early generations. It's now built on Chromium, supporting similar add-ons and extensions as regular Chrome. So it's perfectly capable, but obviously with any other regular Windows computer, you can install other browsers like Chrome Chrome, Firefox, based on your preferences, you get the full flexibility of a desktop class OS, including other drivers and programs that you may need. But taking a quick look at some of the benchmarks, the N100 is scoring a little bit north of 5,500, really not bad when it comes to, again, an entry-level $200 computer, which is quite energy efficient at only 6 watts, and again, supporting maximum 16 gigs of RAM that we have as configured. And as a quick comparison, of course, this isn't going to be as powerful compared to even more performant flagship grade processors, including the newer gen i5, i7s, Apple's even M1 from a gen or two behind. As you can tell here, we'll still get you roughly 2.5 times higher CPU scores. But at the same time, if you are comparing it with slightly older generation core i5s, i3s, as we touched on previously, it's surprisingly not super far apart. And so the takeaway is it's similar to using a mid-range computer if not upper mid-range from a few years back as compared to some of the extremely entry-level like in Atoms and Celerons from back in the day. In fact, the N3450 was a really common example. I remember vividly just around four years back or so, and a lot of these computers in the same price range use this chip, which by contrast doesn't score even 2,000 on Passmark. So we're getting almost two times faster performance out of an equivalent newer generation entry-level chip found on this unit. So the N100 is still 
I think doing a little bit better than many folks would give it credit for. So for light computing tasks, it's surprisingly not as sluggish as you'll expect. Let's also try loading back a video or streaming one back, I should say. We can crank up the resolution up to 4K and also pull up stats for nerds to take a quick look at our current frame rates. And as we can tell up here, pretty minimal dropped frames and overall very fast again when it comes to loading. I'm noticing very little moments of choppiness and the video plays back almost instantly when you're clicking on it. So streaming back videos in 4K, whether it's YouTube, Netflix, or local files in 4K can be handled without too many issues. Again, also helped by a relatively good antenna reception quality despite a slim chassis on the machine. So we can scrub between different parts of the video and it still loads back actually quite quickly, all things considered. Really not too problematic for media consumption. And as echoed in some of our previous videos, honestly, even entry-level computers like these can handle office tasks really without too many problems anymore. And that's inclusive of Microsoft Word, Excel, as well as PowerPoint documents, even if you have slightly longer documents with more cells and rows, more complex pivot tables and equations, it still is doing a reasonable job here, all things considered. When you are just doing simple computing tasks like web browsing, as well as even watching back some videos, and doing office tasks, I can barely hear the fan at all. So placing the microphone here right next to the mini computer, again, it is almost completely silent. So it's got to be one of the most quiet active fans I've ever heard. Almost indistinguishable from a fanless computer, in fact, under normal uses. Of course, you can crank it up a little bit more if you are gaming or doing some light Photoshop. But even so, the good news is it's not going to be distracting at all as it's running there in the background. And the top region of the computer does get a touch warmer as well as the metal sides to conduct heat a little bit better. Uh, so it's not going to be completely cold or cool to the touch, but still not bad, again, thanks to that active fan, particularly for such a slim and lightweight chassis and design like this. So despite slightly longer sustained performance under heavier loads compared to the, again, PC Stick and Quieter series, it's still impressively quiet, all things considered, versus many of the other mini PCs that we've checked out in the past. Let's also try opening up some other utility applications here. So just a split second later, things are still running pretty decently, again, thanks to the 16 gigabytes of built-in RAM that the N100 is able to take advantage of, it means that in most situations, I was able to run at least five or six applications simultaneously, and the machine still felt decent from a responsiveness point of view, as you can tell here. So general multitasking isn't going to be too problematic if you're using this as a office machine. In similar fashion for web browsing, I was able to open up at least a dozen tabs, jump back and forth, and they were still retained by the system's RAM. Echoing our remarks from earlier, we have access to the Microsoft Store if you want to download some slightly more optimized productivity as well as mobile type games which are available here, a little bit more maybe secure as well and verified from Microsoft's part. However, again, like any other x86 computer running on Windows, you can download all the legacy drivers as well as programs you may need for connecting other peripherals and accessories. The vast collection of desktop apps is one benefit, of course, to having a Windows computer versus lighter and newer OSs. So if you're worried about compatibility with a specific peripheral that you're trying to connect to the computer software, that's an area where you don't really have to worry thanks to the full version of Windows installed here. And similar if you are doing a little bit of light gaming, I would say it still is feasible. However, I would still say this is an area where because of the integrated Intel graphics, you would probably want to keep things a little bit lighter for native games that you're playing back. However, you can always try cloud gaming solutions, including Microsoft's xCloud, since it has good Wi-Fi connectivity, it's acting as a portal to more powerful hardware and GPU over the cloud. Or you can also try some emulation style games. So taking a look at Yakuza here as a quick example, if you're playing back some, again, PlayStation games, as well as Nintendo 64, Game Boy, those will, of course will still run pretty well on hardware like this, achieving a pretty acceptable frame rate overall. Here's also Genshin Impact as another example. So again, the FPS is still going to be serviceable for a game that you're playing locally on the machine. Here's Dota 2 as well. Again, performance can be sustained maybe just a little bit longer compared to, again, the fanless mini PCs under the quieter line, which are perhaps more designed for office tasks more than anything. Uh, this can keep it running without thermal throttling for just a little bit longer. So all in all, not shabby for an entry-level computer like this. Titles like Minecraft, Fortnite are still playable, just lowering some of the graphic settings. And again, to their credit, using that built-in fan, I haven't noticed too much thermal throttling even after 
after slightly longer sessions, more than 45 minutes to an hour, it still seems to be retaining a similar level of performance, which is good to see. Again, the integrated Intel graphics is still going to be one constraint or bottleneck if you are trying to play back AAA style games. That's where you have to really look into cloud gaming, but for a low cost computer like this, takeaway is I think it's more than acceptable, especially with some retro emulation titles that you can check out. And similarly, when it comes to doing some creative work, if you're keeping things light when it comes to simple image editing, it can definitely be handled here without really any problems at all. Even stitching together some video clips at 1080p resolution, Full HD, can still be handled all right. For instance, exporting a five minute long Full HD clip took around just three to four minutes, so it was still quite fast. However, if you're trying to get into 4K video editing territory, that's also an example where you may want to look at a slightly more powerful mini PC with GPU inside to expedite the rendering times. For instance, a one minute 4K clip took around six minutes or so to export on this machine. So if you're patient enough, I guess you can still work with that, uh, but definitely you're hitting some of the constraints there, keeping in mind the price bracket that this machine is sitting at. But all things considered, I am actually still quite impressed that this thing is running as well as it is for such a slim chassis, but at the same time delivering a little bit better consistency and slightly smoother performance overall versus their completely fanless alternatives. So not bad if you just want a slight incremental bump in performance. That being said, like we've touched on at the start of this video, it still is technically an entry-level chip inside. Would have been nice if maybe they used even faster DDR5 RAM as well as having again a faster SSD in that second slot uh, by default. But those are all areas where they probably cut a few edges to bring the cost down. So again, slightly improved performance if that's what you're after and still a very stylish design, good enough for light casual computing needs when it comes to browsing, office related tasks which can be handled here without too many issues. And although the CPU hasn't necessarily been overclocked per se, despite the name, it still is at least a improvement that you can actually feel when you're navigating around. So the difference is perceivable at least, even if it isn't necessarily going to be a complete overhaul or night and day difference, but still nice to have. So if you're interested, you can check out more details in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching Kirad OS Reviews. That's been just a closer look at the Mealy Overclock 4C 